Hello and welcome to the first in a 10-part video series of Adapting to Project Professional 2010. My name is Bill Raymond. I'm a Microsoft Project MVP and I'll be recording each one of these videos. I just wanted to uh, go through a little bit as to why you might want to watch this video. One is you will be expected to already be familiar with the Microsoft Project desktop. So if you already have Microsoft Project on your desktop, you've been working with Gantt charts, you're familiar with project management ter terminology, then this video is for you. If you've never gotten started, you could probably find this video series helpful, but I really only will be covering major changes in the product as opposed to how to use Microsoft Project overall. One of the other things that I'm trying to do is make sure that I don't go PowerPoint crazy. So this video and the last video will have some PowerPoint slides. Everything else will be pure demonstrations. So what are some of the things that are new inside of Microsoft Project on the desktop? Well, there's quite a bit. Uh, the, actually, there's, there's more than I can list on this page. However, these are the big ones. These are the big investments that Microsoft made. First, there's a new ribbon UI. There's lots of improvements uh, that come along with that that we'll walk through. There's manually scheduled tasks. This is something that I think some project managers are going to love and others will wish weren't there. But actually, I think you'll see some, after you start using it, some real good uses for that capability. Uh, inactive tasks, a team planner capability that allows you to visually fix resource over allocations, a new task inspector capability that looks how uh, tasks are formed and resources how they're assigned to tasks and actually gives you some feedback as to how to improve your schedule. A new timeline view that allows you to output your project in a very rich, compelling way that's not uh, necessarily looking like a Gantt chart that we'd normally uh, output to PowerPoint for you via screen capture or something like that. There's a new backstage capability, and I'll show you some of those, but actually one of the things that I really like about the backstage is this new dynamic print preview uh, option, and we'll walk through that. It has Visual Studio Team Foundation Server integration. Uh, if you're a software developer and you want to synchronize your project plans uh, with Visual Studio, uh, there's that capability. I'm going to show where it is, but I'm not going to get into much detail on that, primarily because I'm not really a software developer and I don't really know too much about the integration. I plan on learning it, so maybe I'll do a video on that some other time. There's now a 32-bit and a 64-bit version. So those of you that are working on really large schedules, uh, very complex schedules with lots of resources, this new 64-bit version will inc include a lot more uh, capability, power, performance, and there's much, much more. So again, I'll be going through a whole series of videos walking through these, so I'm not going to really demonstrate them at this time. But let's go ahead and talk about what the video series will encompass. First, there's this video, so that's our PowerPoint uh, slide deck that I'm going through now. Then we'll go through learning the new Ribbon and Fluent UI. This will just get you acclimated with the new user interface because it's very different than the original version of Microsoft Project. We'll talk about settings and defaults. Uh, you know, if you go into Microsoft Project today and you go to Tools Options and set all your defaults there, that's not necessarily where they are inside of Microsoft Project 2010. So we'll go through finding those common things that you might set at the beginning of a project. We'll step through manually scheduling uh, tasks, the new manual scheduling feature. We'll talk about inactive tasks. And with number four and five, manual scheduling and inactive tasks, I have some thoughts on some of the best practices for using that, and I'll share those with you as well. You can decide if they're best practices for your uh, cell, for your organization. We'll talk about the new team planner and resource management capabilities, the new timeline view, and then we'll also talk about some of the new reporting, printing, and output capabilities. 
And then I'll also sh show you some of the advanced features. We're not going to get really into detailed on this, but these are things like connecting to project server, synchronizing your project plan with SharePoint. That could probably be a whole other set of vi video series. And in, fa as, in fact, I will probably do a whole video series on those. But I'll at least show you how to access them and what some of the capabilities are. And then we'll wrap up with one last PowerPoint deck to sort of cover all of these. If you're starting from scratch, watching this video series, I plan on releasing them once every few days to a week. So uh, there'll, be, there'll be some time periods uh, between each one of these videos. So do keep an eye on my projectnation.net website. So with that, what I'm going to do is wrap up here. And I hope that you enjoy uh, this video series of Adapting to Project Professional 2010. Please do provide me any feedback on my blog. You can get to that at projectnation.net. Please do respond to uh, the, the posts. I do read them, and I'm ready and willing to take your uh, feedback and input. Thank you.